Time of use pricing is uh, becoming a thing. It's already a thing in some places. It's becoming more of a thing. More than that, dynamic pricing. When there's a big event, maybe it's weather, maybe it's an outage, maybe it's uh, just a uh, you know, good old fashioned uh, tea kettle moment at the end of the primetime news, whatever it may be. Uh, but we gotta figure out what's going on and how to save money and how to make the most of it. I'm um, here at the X Takeover. Uh, we're gonna have a chat with the folks from OptiWatt. I'm Brian, welcome to Future AZA. So you're already working with a number of uh, customers all over the US. Is yeah, that... so we actually have customers all over the US, uh, Canada, and actually I just met a few people from Australia who are using us for their time of use rates down there as well. And in a lot of places, when is off peak for a lot of utilities? Eight, nine? It's interesting, so it varies. So there are some areas that they have heavy solar usage, so they actually have off peak during the daytime. So. Oh, during the duck curve. Exactly. Yep, and so we have some of that, we have some of the nighttime components, <clears throat> and kind of what you were, uh, what I heard you talking about, which is this idea of like the dynamic component. So yeah. we do the managed charging, which allows us to kind of your everyday uh, rates, but then uh, there are times where either the utility systems will predict, or either like a voltage drop it, or some sort of like increment weather that may cause it. And so our customers can actually get the call, hey, if you can actually power down your EV charging, then it will help us during that event. So what we're looking at is, um, rather than waiting to hear it on the news, uh, you use Google's API mm -hmm. to uh, your system communicates with their, their data feed to say, look, I know you wanna drop the temperature by two degrees, but if you wait an hour to start that. Then, exactly. And does a customer already get a benefit from that or does it just help the, the grid? So it's a combination. It's going to depend uh, location location because we can do it with the charger and we can do it with the uh, sorry with the smart thermostat and we can do the EV charger. So and everyone at the end of the day, the grid is the big part. The grid is a, a big benefit for the community. The uh, we work with utility companies who have special promotions where if you can shift off during this time, you'll get an additional reward for the shifting that you're doing, whether whether it's one way or another. And we help you register for that, quantify that, and then receive the reward. So let's say I've got a big house, I'm kind of a bigger power user, whether it's because I've got a couple of EVs and drive a lot and AC or whatever. What kind of benefit is that customer looking at? So the numbers I've seen most recently, on average, your average size house is about $380 a year in AC savings. Just in AC savings? Just in savings. Okay. Each EV is typically showing about $280 a year in savings and that's for just the managed charge component. The demand response is gonna vary area to area. Um, and the program benefits as well for the managed charging. So like in San Cremento, they have a program where SMUD customers will get $150 for their EV registering for this program, just as a reward for joining. Just for signing up. Yeah. Because the biggest savings I found, see I had a problem where my uh, furnace went out and by just not fixing it, I've saved so much money. The difference is though I'm you know cold. Yeah. No, I did get the furnace fixed. I just had to get back to town first. But you're saying that um, without changing my comfort level at home, yep. every quarter I can go out and have a hundred dollar meal for some of these customers. Yeah, I mean for, it's, for free. Yeah, and then if and if the rewards stacks on top of that, our, you know, the the grid and the utility has the big incentive for off peak. And our whole goal when we were started was first make it easy for the person and then second, pass through that benefit over to the user from the utility company. Okay, so what other things does OptiWatt uh, manage? So time of use for heating and cooling. Yep. Time of use for, does it, uh, does it, does it talk to my water heater? Does it talk to my... That's on our roadmap. So we have a roadmap right now. I think we have a solar component that's gonna come out in the next few months. We have uh, battery components we wanna work on smart water heaters, smart plugs. Our, our, our view of OptiWatt is whole home energy savings, one place. Okay, and what is OptiWatt? I assume it's a large device I place in my living room. Nope, it is zero device. It is what? strictly an app. It's an, and actually, because there are some people out there who have app fatigue, you can manage this from your desktop computer as well. You can just log into your OptiWatt app on your desktop, no need to install the app. You can have the app component as well, uh, but it's we're trying to make it easy. We're trying to make it accessible to people. 
Okay, so other than the EV and the, and the climate control, what is it managing today? That's it for today. That's it for today. And it does that through, the, through Google's API. I don't need to do anything. Right. And in the future, as more utilities get, um, get dynamic pricing. Now, you may have heard uh, of, <laughs> first of all, how many utilities are there to keep track of? Is it hundreds or is it thousands? It's, it's, I think it's thousands. I because, think it is thousands. Because you even get scenarios like, we have a program that's gonna be starting with Ava Energy in Alameda County in November. And so they're PG&E hardware, but Ava Energy is a community purchasing. SMUD is the same way. So you have this dynamic where there's, there's the, the, the physical infrastructure, and then there's the actual energy buyer. And so it is a lot to keep track of. It is for, yeah. For a company, uh, it, that's a that's a full time job without a doubt. Yeah. Now there are um, are there any utilities that you're aware of in the U S. that are already doing actual dynamic pricing? I know for commercial and industrial that's been a thing for years. Right. Uh, I know that there are aluminum plants that get paid to not turn on today yep. because we need the power. Yeah. Uh, but do you know if that's reached residential yet? So, two forms. The first form I do know, so a lot of these uh, utilities are doing what's called demand response. So they've got systems in place that will predict the, the need, usually ahead of time. And so we can work with them and get a, a response system and we can pass it through to the customer and say, hey, here's a time period that's been identified by their systems. If you power down, you're helping the grid. And in some cases with our contracts, if you power down, you're gonna get a reward for the amount of, you, that you saved based on that. Sure. So instead of not just paying the 15 cents a kilowatt, they might pay me a penny to not draw the kilowatt. Exactly. Yep. Which is and we, and better we, for them, better for me. And being on the OptiWatt app, we can actually help you justify it too because we'll, we can actually demonstrate the history. So let's say you're, you're not powering up your AC and you're not charging. We can show them the back history and say, this is what the customer normally has done and this is what they did not do. And so then that, that way you get that proof point of like, hey, I'm a, I'm a power user, like you said, I power down for this period of time, my reward should match what my power use was. Right, and that's uh, an interesting way of doing it. As a result, uh, this if everyone was doing this, we'd need fewer peaker plants. Fewer peaker plants. Um, we would be able to increase the longevity of transformers. Oh. So you have a component where in some parts of the countries, the transformers can barely handle five EVs charging at one time. Oh, goodness. Especially the startup, that instant startup. There's other components to where even though they can handle it, it's reducing the life of the transformer. And so our system can balance down to a transformer level to where even if we're just offsetting the start time, we're avoiding that peak. So that's all big benefits. Um, do you think more utilities are going to go to a stronger dynamic kind of pricing or have more tiers for uh, peak versus off peak? So, as, yeah. Yes. I, so we don't have contracts with them yet, so we can't talk about it. Well, but right. We, but, I, but I have seen. But you know that that's a thing the industry is moving toward. Yeah, real time. They want to be able to have <clears throat> rates that are communicated through the system. Right. And have systems that can catch those rate changes and feed them to the customer. Is there a future where you're also working the other direction with virtual power plants going back into the grid. Yeah, so battery, so, so the battery component is a part of our, our component. And we've even started to study a little bit using your vehicle as a virtual power plant. We've gone back and forth with it right now because we don't know what the additional cycles will do to the battery and we're right. really concerned about the customer. Right. But for the power wall components and other type of battery backups, that is on our roadmap. Okay. And yeah, for the vehicles, a lot most of them are not set up for that yet. Right. And, and when we get to lithium iron phosphate for everybody, it's going to be a lot easier sell for the manufacturers than right. because if they're going to warranty it, of course. So are there any uh, missing elements? Uh, well, here's a big one for you. What is the holdup with virtual power plants? Is it all the individual utilities being sticks in the mud? Uh, you know, it's, I think there's several. So getting in touch with, with consumers is hard. There's a lot of noise. So like when we're trying to talk about the OptiWatt difference, you know, we're SOC 2 compliant from, from an IT standpoint because we work with IT or with the utility companies as a requirement. But there are gonna be other like 
money saving apps, they might not have that level. So there's a lot of noise to get through and utility companies are challenged to do that. They're used to marketing to their audience. These are their, our people. We're not competing with a whole lot of people necessarily, maybe right. a handful. Right. Versus if that. Exactly. Versus now we're on this big wide area and we're trying to talk against all these other people's voices. The other part is that there's trust and understanding. So one of the big things we try to do with OptiWatt is we try to not be too kitschy, be too funny sometimes because it's a very serious thing. You're letting us control the electricity on your car and how it charges. You're right. letting us control the comfort in your home. Right. When you start getting into the battery plants, the, the ones, sure. you're letting us into your home. And so right. trust is a big component of that. Well, and it was not that long ago that power plants were energy companies earned, very hard earned a reputation as being a little abusive of that trust. So I understand consumer hesitance and I understand the delicate approach that is required now right. from the utilities. Anything I missed? Um, I ran you through the ringer. No, for sure. And, 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 and it's community because OptiWatt actually started just to help Tesla owners not have to like walk up to their thing, plug it in, unplug it and plug it in. Yep. And so community has been a big part. We're here at X Takeover. We're working in Washington, Toronto, we're working with all these different Tesla owners clubs because we want to be part of that community. We want to know them well. Awesome. So guys in the comments, uh, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Uh, should I have asked them some other really tricky ones? I did my best. It's been a long weekend, but we're having that fun out here. Uh, OptiWatt, it'll all be on the screen and in the description. Check it out. And uh, everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. You know what you're doing. Stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when you save enough money to buy me dinner.